got it. <laughs> I, I should have known that was coming. Yeah, welcome to Binary I Jazz. Guess you too. Uh, it's a podcast. Here we are. Uh, we you. This is season five, and season five uh, is also inclusive of a non-existent season. Like I don't know, three and a half, two and a half, something that where we forgot to tick the season over. So like. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know what we're going to say. Uh, we're still here. Dude. And you, you actually don't care what season it is. Yeah, or episode, you probably don't, so. uh, except that it shows it's up differently in, 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 in iTunes. No, not iTunes. Podcasts app, I guess. Yes. <laughs> how, do, how do people consume <laughs> these things? I don't know. Um, I will say uh, that uh, the the breaking news change that will probably be happening uh, against our will is that it's very likely that if you do follow this uh us on on the the twitter uh site uh it is very likely that that account will, will probably go dead because the only posts it gets are automated from uh our website uh to twitter uh to notify that there's yeah. a new episode and that functionality is uh likely going away like uh probably by the time this episode uh is published so that's fun bye <laughs> so bot owners amongst us what are your plans like are you actually going to shut down your bots or are you just going to kind of leave, like let them keep hitting that api endpoint even though it doesn't work just to make your point I'm not sure. I haven't, I just, I feel like I just got hello space bot like running and like running smoothly, yeah. like a, a finely oiled machine of like actually hitting the endpoint at a certain time. Yeah. Um, and I might just let, let him go into this great night. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and just keep pinging. Let's see. Also, yes. I'm kind of like, I don't think they've actually released information for like what the lower tier would be and not that yeah. I'm going to give them money but I'm kind of like is this even happening like yeah. I just I kind of don't believe anything anymore wow that's that's, that's where I am that's where I am <laughs> I'm gonna um, just, I'll just keep blasting it at some point I'm gonna look at my log file and be like I should probably turn that integration off because I don't want to kill a server with a full log file again yeah that's um that's where it, I'm headed personally. Notoriously, the genre nader bot uh, has not been functioning for quite a while, so that's sort of a non a non issue. And it's not about to start. Well, well that was gonna be that was gonna be my next thing once I figured out Hello Space Bot, and then I was like, when I have some free time, I'll do genre nader, and then I was just like, or I guess I won't because. Well, I, I do. I, I have heard. I've heard that the Mastodon. Uh, API is is nice to work with. So so I I have a thought of of looking at what that would uh, look like. My only other bot besides like you know website integrations that auto post to Twitter, which is everything, um, is uh is my this or that bot, mm -hmm. which is where it you it every like once a day I think it's just once a day it it asks you this or that. And then you can respond and say this, and it will tell you you're wrong. Or you can respond and say that, and it will tell you you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you're never right. You're never right. You know what you should do? As or, a, you like can, final... or you can not, you can not, well, actually, you have to phrase it as uh, the answer to the question is this, or something to that effect. Uh, and if you don't do that, it'll tell you you're wrong in how you phrase the, the response. <laughs> You should close it down by writing like a self destruct destruct in there that like takes an answer and says, "Oh, you're correct," and then deletes itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just done. I would I would watch that. Like I, I like if you made that an event. I, I I actually I would go so far as to say I would pay a reasonable amount for an online event to observe that happening to watch the bot, someone delete the bot that way, or donate to a charity of your choice. It would be donate the bot would, to charity. No, whatever I donate, whatever I paid for it, I would donate to a charity of your choice instead. Your I preference. I think last time I checked, Mastodon has an instance that's just for... Yeah, there bots. is uh, it, bots dot in space, I think. Yeah. Or, maybe no! bot, or maybe bots in dot space or something. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause I, I haven't, I had a, a Mastodon account for bots, like, I don't know, too many years ago. And then I was like, but there's nobody over here. There's just, it doesn't make sense. And then I was just like, oh, I still have this account. I, um, maybe I will get ground control bot working on Mastodon unless somebody else has beaten me to it. Probably someone has at this point. I, doubt it i mean give yourself more credit yeah i, I doubt <laughs> it and how would you find it uh you can search for people like... um let me it looks well, like launch radar bot exists launch radar oh wait this doesn't look like anything i want nope <laughs> eh, maybe not yeah i don't think so okay ground control bot also, you're... Oh, no. Nobody would build that. I'm saying someone hmm. build, would build an integration off the back of the API that has launch stuff oh. at this point. There is somebody named Ground Control with no posts, and it's at cap, at cap, at cap underscore vimes at vivaldi.net. So it's not even a... doesn't even own the ground... And that's the only thing that comes up for Ground Control. So I think you're good. Or maybe I should start, start a, a Mastodon instance on the same server because that would be... A stupid I, mean, I think you need more things on your plate. Yeah. I was, I was, I've been wondering about, um, like how much work it would be to create a Macedon instance that was just like essentially like a binary jazz Macedon instance. What would be the benefit though? Um, that we own that the, I mean, it would be like, you know, at binary jazz at binary jazz dot com <laughs> novelty yeah yeah i don't yeah. i mean do you have a do you have a um a vanity license plate on your car i actually do <laughs> very <Yeah>. psychic <laughs> all right um it's it, it it's a it's an rsl license plate for those uh, uninitiated RSLs, Real Salt Lake. Oh, I'm like, RS. I was trying to figure out how that related to D&D &D yeah. and I couldn't get nope. there. But then nope. right it's, before it, you said it, I was yeah. like, Real Salt Lake. Yes. It's an, it's an RSL play. license plate. So it's got the the, the yeah. badge of the of the team and it's for RSL is the license plate number. Nice. Um, and it like as a, as like an excerpt of like the sort of theme chant song, which is part of which is we're here for RSL for RSL. Um, but uh, which makes it really easy to um, like when we're places where we need to uh, put our license plate number, like, oh, you know, yeah. camping or like hotels or whatever, um, then yeah. it, it's really easy because I don't ever forget it because I always always forget our other license plate numbers. Yeah. No, why I would you remember that? I have a photo yeah. of mine saved in my phone because I'm. Yeah, like, I used to do that too. <laughs> it's I'm like I kind of vaguely I know it I know it to recognize it to be like that's my car I'm gonna yeah. go walk over to that car. <laughs> but now I, I unequivocally know that it's for her. So I did we for a while well when the Royals were a thing we talked about changing it to to something Royals themed, um, mm -hmm. but then the Royals moved and then. And so now it's still for RSL, even though um, we're kind of uh, it less like, in, less enthusiastic about the team. Like, yeah. It looks like RSL will be here in April to play Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go to that. You should match. You should go. Yeah, I've been meaning to go to um, a Charlotte match. It seems like it would be like a great time. Yeah, like a great time. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, we have taken a different approach to topics uh, in season five, six, five, <laughs> and um, it's officially question, season five. Officially season five, we have taken an officially different approach. Um, I propose talking about um, how I make courses since my second one just released. I didn't announce it anywhere because. You just We're announced it here. Announced it. You've here. heard it here first on Binary <laughs> Jazz, the source of all even... <laughs> of your breaking news. We need a breaking news like a sound sound clip that we can drop in from time to time. <laughs> Maybe it should be the sound of like a vase falling and shattering. That would be. <laughs> that would be it. Um, and I, I say this and now I realize um, Rhonda is leaving in 10 minutes for the weekend with some friends. So 
So um, as you broke your news, you need to this. step away. No, I mean, I'll get started. But then a few minutes in, like at a really good cliffhanger is when I'll step away. Okay. I'm, I'm more media savvy than that. <laughs> I'm not media savvy at all. <laughs> um, I did. I mean, I guess like I, I, I pseudo announced it. I do uh, courses for LinkedIn learning. I pseudo announced it on LinkedIn learning by retweeting the retweeting. No, re linking in whatever it's called. Reposting. Reposting. What a what an uninspired action. LinkedIn is not a source for inspiration. LinkedIn is a place to get the job done and leave. I don't think it's even that. Honestly, it's it's. Don't yeah. disparage your employer. <laughs> Uh, I yeah I don't know I don't think I would even call it that kind of relationship. Okay. I'm a uh, you're publisher. I'm an instructor. I guess. Yeah, I'm an instructor. That's what they call me. They don't call like we don't have a kind of relationship. That's all I am to them, an instructor. Which is fine. I actually like it that way. It's a really. This isn't about LinkedIn though. This is about courses. I have a question. Uh, before yeah. you get into your course making thing, uh, having to do with being an instructor. Um, yeah. Your payments from linkedin i'm not going to ask what they are but do are you officially like an independent contractor yes so that stuff is not uh there's no taxes taken out of it it's just correct so you need yeah. to adjust your as we're entering into tax season you need to adjust your taxes and your w-2s and stuff accordingly to offset for the fact that you're not getting yeah yep okay yep because that yeah. burned the crap out of me for many years and i just got to the point where i was like welp one of these royalty checks is just going to be uh, paying for um, taxes. The rest of the year, yeah. Yeah, and and then that's I, it. I do the silly thing where I manually withhold more mm -hmm. from my day job paycheck. Um, and then at the end of the year, I'm always like astounded by how wrong I estimated it. Um, like, yeah, well, meaning you get refund back? That's, yeah, I don't want any – like in a perfect world, I would just nail it. Yeah. And I would fill out the paperwork. Well, I would type it into TurboTax and hit submit, and they would be like, we'll talk to you in a year. But so, usually what happens, I do it, and I'm like, well, then I feel stupid. I'm like, that money could have been used for – it doesn't matter. It's just it – it's yeah. it's a total just psychological moving thing. Like the, it's, yeah, moving the dollars around. Yeah. Um, the year that Pluralsight decommissioned a bunch of my courses – so I, I never did that. I never did that thing. Um, yeah. And the year that Pluralsight decommissioned a bunch of my courses and I was expecting that check to be coming right before tax time or right after tax time so that I could just use that to pay it off. Uh, and yes. it didn't. It was significantly less and it burned us. And I was like, OK, I'm never doing that again. I'm going to offset by however much amount. However, saying it at that time was already too late because it already decommissioned everything. Yeah. And they're like, I'm not going to be getting the royalties. So I, I, I offset for not for the full amount, but for an amount like, you know, somewhere in between or something, just more than I would need. Um, so my expectation is that this you year a refund. we'll be getting a refund yeah. because I already, I, I put the offset in um, and we're not, I mean, I got like 200 bucks um, on my last royalty check because it's like one class now that's still up. So they, they don't, they didn't do um, advances or anything though. Correct. Like you got, mm -hmm. you did get, you get advance. paid up front. Uh, you get paid up. Mm. Yeah. You get paid up front. Well, you could, you could either get paid up front and get a slightly smaller royalty percentage. Um, well, not slightly smaller royalty percentage. Um, no, they didn't, they didn't do an advance. They, they paid you on completion. Um, so you still have to do the whole course get paid uh, an amount for the course, depending on what your contract was. So either um, uh, just royalties or um, an amount that, that, you know, is it, with a smaller amount of royalties, or you could, you could just uh, bypass the, the payment on completion and just get royalties and get a higher share of the royalties. Um, so the people that were doing really well, who had a lot of successful courses, like there was like five big names or something that like, um, consistently, you know, get tons of royalties. They didn't need, they didn't worry about the, the, you know, payout for course completion because they would just do, um, they would just do the royalties and get more money in royalties and that, you know, but I was never at that point. Gary's on the move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I save more than I need to in hopes that I get a little bonus at the end. 
um if when possible um that doesn't always pan out but I recently actually a few days ago got a notice that they did a scan an automatic scan supposedly of last year's taxes and they thought I was wrong and I was like well that would have been helpful to know before 12 months had passed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because like any like supposed extra is long gone yeah for sure <laughs> Um, but then I reviewed what they were claiming and I was like, oh no, actually, like I did this correctly and you just don't realize I have US clients. And mm -hmm. so that was reassuring, but a lot of more paperwork. And I'm like, no, no, I, I want to do this year's taxes, not last right. year's taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to, I I screwed up one year too, and I don't even remember what it was, but like I got a, a nasty gram uh from the irs that said you still owe this much for this thing that you forgot to enter or something that they mm -hmm. had tracked down like they had they knew what it was and how much it was and it was like something i had forgotten to put in or something yeah um and then there was another year where i think like it was there was some weird thing i think when i was leaving web dev where i don't know something got messed up and i it was wrong but i had to deal with it anyway um, mm -hmm. because I didn't have the, like the documentation to, to back it up. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it was never, we've never been like audited, audited, like with no, like, no, that's coming to the house or yeah. Yeah. This wasn't that this was just, they were like, look, this is, we think this is an error, like either show proof or we're yeah. just going to right. say you owe the money essentially. Right. Yeah. And that was what the first thing was, was, I think was, was that it was wrong, but I had no way of, of validating it. So it was just like, whelp. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, taxes. Yeah. This was not the topic that I signed up for. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, taxes. Um, yeah. I don't, I, I don't enjoy filing two sets of taxes. I um, wish I could not do that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's not meant to be. You have to do that because you have clients in the U.S. or you have to do that because you're a dual citizen? I have to do that because I'm a dual citizen because the U.S. is one of two or three countries that taxes based on citizenship rather than residency. Yeah. Um, so, which <laughs> I didn't know for the first seven years I wasn't living there. Oh, so no. So I had to basically... You had to do back pay or something? I had to, to file a, like, a, I'm sorry um paperwork essentially mm -hmm. and then also i'm lucky in that where i was one i wasn't making enough money for it to really matter either way mm -hmm. and also taxes tend to be higher here than in the states yeah. for my tax bracket so it kind of like they weren't like you owe money they just were like don't do it again <laughs> and yeah. i was like i'm filing now <laughs> but i'm basically filing that like i'm paying taxes somewhere else essentially it's like this is in the state or yeah. federal level no, no, for for IRS. Like I file, okay. I file that I'm paying taxes in a different country. Elsewhere, yeah. But of course yeah. it takes 50 pages to say that somehow. <laughs> Do you have an accountant or someone who like does that with you? Like Yeah, I have somebody who specializes because I like I've I've tried to figure it out on my own because I'd rather not pay the money. Mm -hmm. Um, but every year I can't seem to figure it out and then I end up just calling this and he i this year i'm just not even gonna try i'm just gonna call him yeah. on time instead of being like i don't get it <laughs> um but yeah and then it gets sent to me and i sign the things and i send it in so the minute Ugh. that TurboTax gets any if if TurboTax ever gets more complicated such that or if there was some weird thing like that where like i had to do a thing Mm -hmm. uh that was different than i would probably hire uh, uh a tax person somebody to do my taxes because uh, i don't want to deal with it and TurboTax makes it easy enough that i can basically click next a whole bunch of times mm -hmm. um it's for the most enough, part yeah. yeah um that that i don't need to worry about it but but yeah we if it gets more complicated than that then i might yeah well we have someone <clears throat> for our canadian taxes too but it's because they help us figure out all the, you know, sole proprietor stuff that, yeah. that we don't, uh, we're not as privy to, which is helpful. And also it's just like, 
Yeah, it, it like, feels like we kind of graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that that's definitely like I didn't do that when we were freelancing, and and um, I mean I think there's probably a lot of places where we could have been getting more back uh, because we weren't making very much and um, because I was trying to do it on my own. And, yeah. I feel like it's the difference between like you move yourself and have friends and then you hire movers. And I'm and like, no, like, no. Oh, I'm yeah. like, once, once you've hired movers, I'm like, no, no, we're not going back. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it costs a little more than like pizza and soda or whatever, but also like your stuff all makes the trip in one piece. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. All right, so tell us about making courses, yeah, Gary. Sure. The floor is uh, yours. Because I found the process super interesting because I um, had never done it before. And I will share the prescriptive way LinkedIn uh, suggests because I, it's, I, I found it valuable outside of courses for LinkedIn. Um, the process kicks off with like a course brief, like who is this for? What's the title? What's it about? Short stuff maybe some keywords you know don't spam it because it's not seo it's actual human reading it coupled with um and is it a documented thing like you write up they a have a document you fill out yeah. yeah yeah um coupled with a another uh asset that they and i'm sure if you wanted to turn it in another way they would figure it out like they like that because it's pretty standardized but if you wanted to supply it another way they would figure it out um coupled with a uh spreadsheet that is the chapters and every video in the chapter, along with like a learning goal, like justifying why would this video exist? Yeah. And that to me is the key part. Like, why would this exist? Um, because as I'm like planning these things, I'm like, oh, I should do a chap a video about blah, blah, blah. And I go to write it and go, I already have this learning goal. So I either need to combine these or fix the title mm -hmm. or or I'm not thinking about this the right way. Um, yeah. And that's significant. And so, you know, at the end, I'm like, well, I know this is going to be 41 videos or 22 videos or whatever before getting much further um yeah. so i will I'll, I'll interject because uh Please because do. yeah no because our, i have done similar things and, and the process that i experienced was different so so similar I have a brief uh but we were asked to write up an outline um mm -hmm. and and the outline is you know essentially like you know top level like what each section is and then like a little bit about what's in each thing with some examples and what the demos are and whatever but there was no like at least when i was doing it and things might have changed by now uh there was no descriptive like this is who this is for that would have been at the the higher level uh you know course like when you when you pitch the course basically um and and other af, after that is basically like yeah we assume that you have your shit together or not not that you we assume that you don't have your shit but like we assume you know yes. what you're talking about and, and that you can prepare it in a way that is interesting to people and if people aren't then it's basically your royalties that you're losing um, i i think to that it's really interesting because um it uh because you know a topic very well doesn't necessarily mean that you can present yeah i, I, I think logical, i think that, i think that yeah actually i think that distinction is actually really valuable and i think that like my courses for sure would have benefited from having that level of like what is yeah. what what are you supposed to get out of each thing um because there are definitely things where like like i did a I did a course that was like introduction to wordpress where i literally like went through every single screen in wordpress um mm -hmm. and there are probably parts i mean i know for a fact that there are parts of that that are very droll and boring and, and not very exciting because you're looking at like screen options tabs and stuff um where like maybe some of those things could have been combined with other things where the goal is similar or, like we're talking about the same sort of yeah. thing we don't need to like spend a ton of time on this thing we just want to sort of yeah. introduce different things the other thing that that was true back in the day uh, that I don't think is true. It might still be true, but I don't think is true anymore is we also needed to prepare an XML file um, that specifically like when you have all the videos recorded and you're submitting it, uh, there is an XML file that you need to create that has like the name of the video, the like the path to it and all this stuff that they then use for um for like building the page so that it has all the chapters yeah. and stuff uh, laid out for you because it wasn't like it was like a lot of this stuff was kind of like, I mean, I think the back end for at least a little while was a little bit duct taped together. Um, so like some of that stuff, a lot of that stuff really in the early days was pushed on to the, the author to like, okay, you need to kind of you know, fill in the, fill, it, fill in it, the yeah. blank. Like, like there was a long time where it's like, okay, here's the official um, like 
intro and outro like slides and stuff that you need to use or here's the styles or here's a thing that you need to put in as a bumper or whatever um all that stuff is on you as opposed to like you send it to them and then they can do the bumpers and whatever the transitions that they need uh, which i don't think is i don't think that is the case anymore there's um i think i think getting into that i think the production is interesting at least in in my approach there's 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 two parts of it there's the like script preparation and then there's recording mm -hmm. and during script preparation like every two weeks i would eat three eat nope meet there's the word with a producer um and the scripts were like they also provide a template you can use whatever you want they provide a template where there's two columns left side is what you're saying right side is what you're doing on screen mm -hmm. or with your hands or whatever which would be fun to look at in hindsight in an episode here what are you doing with your hands <laughs> <laughs> Chris an Italian accent <laughs> um but but like ultimately like that the it's really kind of a weird experience like you write the script like in your well I'm that's kind of what I'll say and the action and there's like you know some cool guidelines like don't do more than 50 words per action mm. don't do more than or don't do less than 50 I don't remember the numbers doesn't matter I don't follow those I don't follow those very well at all I just kind of I try um and get all your assets in place. So like the whole video is done and ready until recording, which could be months later. Mm. Then when you pull it out, it's like, I can knock out three, four, five. If my notes were good, if they weren't, it takes a lot longer. Yeah. So, so at Pearl site, uh, there wasn't, you didn't meet with your uh, producer or director or anyone yeah. uh, for you were self -produced, that frequently yeah. yourself produced. You did all the editing yourself, at least when I was doing it. Um, and that meant that, for a lot of videos, it was done sort of live, live demo style, right? They're they're talking yeah. through things and recording as the screen as they're talking through them. And that was one of the things that they kind of encouraged was like, this gives more sort of human interaction and it's not you're just reading off a script. I found that to be really, really difficult. Um, so I would write yes. a script and I would record and I'd record my audio and my video separately so that like oh. I could go through the whole thing and then I would just like time the stuff that's on the video to what was what I was saying uh, and record the screen separate. Well, because I feel like it it all makes sense, but it's also like, you know, like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Yeah, where it's yeah. like, and, and then you hit, re you hit record and you're just like, <laughs> like I have to move and talk. And yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. And especially like, especially early on when I was just starting to do this stuff, like I was, I was trying to juggle all these things and it's also like partially you're juggling the technology. Um, yeah. So, so it's just, it's just a lot to hold in your head at once. And I was, I already do a lot of ums and ahs and things. And, and that's even, that's, that's amplified when, when I'm having to do it live. Yeah. I do love the idea of breaking down like the goal of each section. And I feel like what that would help me do if I was organizing a course would be to also like extrapolate things that are way too bulky. Mm -hmm. Or like, if my goal is like so lofty and I'm like, Ooh, or maybe I should break it down into smaller chunks. So yeah. someone doesn't get super overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's That's like, totally if fair. my goal is like, learn JavaScript, you're like, well, let me just maybe let's explain what a function is. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will share a, uh, a bit of code I wrote this week that I'm really proud of, uh, as is often the case, like as you're looking at archive, uh, yes, that happened <laughs> after that conversation. As you're looking at like archives, you know, of a post type, sometimes you may need to filter by different facets. Um, and this was like a big blocker for users. They were just like freaked out. They just couldn't mentally get around the idea that these facets didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, it, it, like it will before it goes live. Like, why does anybody care? But it was, it was just a problem. Um, so I like wrote like uh, a couple REST endpoints and all the front end in JS and all the back end PHP in like a day and a half. And it was, it was like beautiful. I'm really happy with it, which is not usually when I do like fast <laughs> stuff, I feel like, well, this is like, this is a little too brittle, blah, blah, blah. This was like, that's a nice feeling then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, I ship this code. I'm like, man, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen. So. So here's a question. If you were going to make a course now, what on what subject would it be on? It doesn't have to be tech. Uh, 
Oh, well, it would be tech. It would be refactoring okay. and writing testable PHP. Oh, wow. Yeah. In fact, I am working on that course, so. <laughs> Spoiler, yeah. spoiler alert. <laughs> if I was going to if I was going to write a course now, it would probably not be uh, WordPress specific. Um, but I don't know yeah. what it would be. Um, it would probably be like I think that there's a lot of especially now that I'm I'm not at Human Made anymore. There's a lot of like inherent engineering practices that that i learned from being at human made that i've just like ingrained that i like this is just this is just what good code looks like mm -hmm. now that i take for granted and there's a lot of the decisions that went into that process that i've sort of just like now it's part of my brain um and and it i think it would be good to sort of like have something that kind of explained some of those things like this is the why behind um doing thing doing this this way um approaching this this problem that way um also i'd probably do a series on how to play role-playing games <laughs> if yeah, someone was, would pay, if was, someone would pay me thought, to do that yeah that's what i thought your answer would be <laughs> yeah well i mean that's that's for sure there um i actually wrote up a thing because i just finished reading um uh a new game that I kickstarted called Stealing Stories for the Devil. And so I wrote up a, like, I, I just finished reading, like, all the materials this morning, and I wrote up a thing in our tabletop channel in Slack uh, at my work um, and said, this is what this is, and this is what I took away from it, and this is what I thought was really interesting about it. And um, there's a couple of decisions that they made in the mechanics that I think are really um, interesting. It's It's essentially like a heist style uh game but it's done in like you know a sci-fi way where like you're actually people from a distant future that have like been transported back to the 20th century so you have all this like high-tech stuff um but you're interacting with and making these heists in a 20th century setting um so there's like a lot of like that stuff but like at its core it's basically just like you know mission impossible right with like all the cool gadgets and things um as well as the ability and the premise is and this re the reason why it's it's called stealing stories for the devil is that you are a you are a liar and you're able to lie to reality and you lie to reality to make things happen to get these objects that are creating these weird improbability zones or something and then you pull that out and then everything that was weird inside that that bubble stops being like goes back to normal and nobody who is in there remembers it except for the people except for you so you're stealing the story of what happened basically um and a couple things that they do that are interesting is that they that the assumption is that the pcs are good at what they do there's no assumption that like that so so that all the all of the roles are not did you succeed or fail it's assumed that you succeed it's whether that was the right thing to do in the moment oh. which i think is a really really interesting like way to turn that on its head and the other thing that i thought was that i think is interesting is is it's not like a play-by-play -play sort of blow-by-blow -blow thing where like if you're in an encounter um like each move each thing that you do is a separate action it's instead um like you're doing scenes and each scene, like a scene in a movie, each scene has like a crux point where that's the, that's the moment where something needs to happen and you're rolling based on what happens in that moment. So like in the moment, so like instead of like there's a gunfight in a hallway, you're not rolling for every single shot, you're rolling, do I come out of this gunfight unscathed basically, mm -hmm. which I think is a really cool way of, of approaching those sorts of things and it it streamlines the storytelling process right it makes it makes it makes you able to to tell a story that's a more cohesive story in a short amount of time uh mm -hmm. without getting hung up on all these like minutiae 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 <laughs> did, minutia. did i skin my knee in the battle yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> interesting yeah have you have you ever heard of a book called legends and lattes <laughs> um it sounds familiar well, I, I haven't read it yet, but someone um, recommended it to me and, and described it as cozy D&D &D if you ignore the actual tasks at hand and go do side quests. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, I think I'm here for that. I was like, it feels very low. It's basically like 
fantasy and they're they open a coffee shop and they're figuring out the menu and like right. I was like this feels very low stakes and I, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm very much here for it anyway I don't know if it's actually good but we will see yeah so it's it but it is a it is a role-playing game though what uh legends and lattes it no is no a, it's a book it's a book okay yeah mm. yeah yeah that sounds that sounds fun yeah well hi i'm back just in time to see this ship off i guess yeah <laughs> i'm doing a lot of that right now in the last like couple minutes you know <laughs> getting so those uh twitter, twitter bots uh <laughs> I probably will get around to every uh, getting ground control bot running on Mastodon at some point, but it's not not before next week. Probably not until after April. I'm I'm pretty tied up at work till April. That's when we're supposed to launch. So yeah, I need to figure out like a post to Mastodon. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.